The Xbox One is Microsoft's big play for mainstream America. It's got football, it's got TV, and did we mention football? It's also continuing a tradition Microsoft started with the first Halo on the original Xbox. Major blockbusters like Call of Duty, Titanfall, and Halo, of course, ensure that both casual gamers and the most hardcore are happy. Xbox, go to killer instinct. Unlike Sony's laser focus on gaming with the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One is an all-in-one entertainment box. This is apparent from the moment you turn it on. The setup process is streamlined around getting you to the main Windows 8-esque dashboard as soon as humanly possible. After grabbing the day one update, which you'll need to do literally anything with the Xbox One, including play games, the console sets up Connect for face and audio recognition. And that's it, you're in. If you want to skip any of it and do it later, that's an option. The emphasis is clear, user first, everything else second. And that's the story of the whole Xbox One, from the gamepad to Connect to the pared down Windows 8 operating system. Let's start with the good. Microsoft's Xbox One gamepad is excellent. It's comfortable, it's nice looking, and it's got two particularly nice new touches. Rumble in the triggers, what Microsoft's calling impulse triggers, and textured thumbsticks. Despite being gimmicky, the rumble triggers make a real difference. Exclusive launch game Forza Motorsport 5 provides a perfect example of why. The trigger rumbling provides feedback from rumble strips in-game on the road, and it's not hard to think of other use cases. How about as a means to convey, say, engaging a gear with one trigger acting as a stand-in for a real-life clutch? You'll have to get your hands on the triggers to truly understand, but the potential is obvious and immediate. If anything, they're not used enough in the launch titles we played on the one. Moving out to those textured thumbsticks, they're a refinement of the Xbox 360's gamepad. Your thumbs are not leaving these sticks, period. The One's thumbsticks remain significantly better than the competition. Beyond the textured top, they're a bit looser than the 360 equivalent, but still plenty precise. A rubberized center depression offers the perfect spot for your thumb's apex. The four standard face buttons are near identical with the controller's predecessor, and are just about the only unchanged aspect. The D-pad is a major step up on the Xbox One, but feels extremely digital. There's even an audible click when you push each direction. It's not quite as nice as the DualShock 4s, but it's such a step up from the 360 gamepad that we're not complaining. The start and back buttons are swapped this time around for, well, we're not really sure what to call the replacements. The one with the lines, what we're calling the menu button, acts similarly to the start button of the past. If you're on the dashboard, it brings up a basic menu for jumping into a handful of settings. If you're in game, it pauses to access the menu. Thus, the menu button. The other button, with what looks like a picture-in-picture -picture icon, doesn't do much of anything. In our testing, it acts the same as the back button from the 360. In Dead Rising 3, for instance, it opens the map. Overall, the new controller feels great. The shoulder buttons are a bit tougher to push than the last time around, but it's not a real issue. Not only does the controller feel great, it looks great. Connect 2.0 is the same bulky camera and mic array that launched to mass popularity on the Xbox 360. Visually, it's a pretty thing, but it's also a rather large black box sitting in front of your television. The lengthy, thick wire extending from it isn't helping either. The new Connect requires a powered USB, a measure of its onboard processor and beefed up internals. The new versions of the gamepad and Connect prove that someone at Microsoft knows how to make a nice looking piece of hardware. That stands in direct contrast to the Xbox One console itself. The Xbox One console is big, heavy, and kind of ugly. People joked back when it was unveiled that it looks like a futuristic VCR, and that remains accurate. The One looks like a device meant to be hidden away in a media center and never touched after setup, like an audio receiver. Thankfully, Microsoft designed the console around just that. After setting up One and Connect, you'll rarely interact with it outside of the occasional Blu-ray or game disc swap. You probably won't want to interact with it either. Ours got dirty from just existing after one day. In terms of fit and finish, the Xbox One is the off-the-shelf PC to PlayStation 4's new Mac polish. The seams literally show. Everything about it feels mass-produced. But looks only go so far when it comes to game consoles. What really matters is what it does. The Xbox One dashboard is cleaner than ever. There are just three steps of one large pane. Pins, home, and store. You can jump between any of these panes very quickly, and loading recently used applications is as fast or faster than your smartphone. 
Like with the PlayStation 4, using the Xbox One feels like using a piece of modern electronics. Pins operate the same way on Xbox One as they do on every other Windows product. Anything you'd like to stick to your home screen ends up there, from games to individual songs to applications. The home screen displays your five most recently used applications. It's where you'll spend the majority of your time quickly jumping in and out of it when swapping between the Xbox One's various tentpole features, gaming, stream film and music, and live television. It's also the best way to tell which applications are active at any given time. Essentially, it's how you tell which applications can be quickly jumped between with having to relaunch from scratch. Should you launch a new game, the last game you had running will shut down. Sadly, unlike the PlayStation 4, the One doesn't warn you. The One allows an array of non-game applications to run at once for instant access, like Netflix, Hulu Plus, Live TV, and more. In this instance, the One is infinitely more competent than its competition. The speed of multitasking is truly impressive. On the flip side, the One's owned content organization is terrible. The My Games and Apps folder is a disorganized hodgepodge of everything you have installed. And despite our best efforts to find it, there doesn't seem to be a way to monitor your console's storage. The Xbox One will simply tell you when you're running low. The store, as ever, is too focused on what Microsoft chooses to feature rather than optimized around organization. You're going to spend a lot of time using Search. Though Microsoft touts this as a unified approach to offering games, things just aren't organized enough in the store for our liking. When you do find something you want, applications download quickly and even continue in the background should you power down the console in always-on mode. Should you download a game, you'll only wait a few minutes before it's front-loaded enough data to start playing. It's not immediate, but it's a hell of a lot better than waiting for a 20-plus gigabyte file to arrive. The experience, of course, varies from game to game based on file size, your own internet speed, and a variety of other factors. The overall speed and cleanliness of the dashboard is commendable. Jumping between games and apps is incredibly fast, and you'll only really notice chugging when attempting to snap multiple apps on screen at once. We'd love to tell you that there's lots of good uses for the snap functionality, but there simply aren't. Sure, you can snap live TV, or Skype, or Netflix, or whatever to the side, but why would you? Both applications are smaller on screen, and it hurts both as a result. Upload Studio, the Xbox One's much-touted game DVR functionality, only partially works on our review box. Saving clips works easily and doesn't affect gameplay. As for how editing and uploads work, that remains to be seen. The same goes for Twitch.tv streaming. We simply didn't have access to that functionality ahead of launch, so we'll have to update after our review runs. As promised, the Xbox One handles your live TV. Hooking it up is as simple as plugging in your cable box's HDMI plug to the Xbox One. If you've hooked up the console's one guide as well, a feed of your cable provider's offerings are shown alongside info from Hulu, Netflix, SkyDrive, and other apps. Your channels can then be jumped into using voice commands. If you've connected your Kinect's IR blaster to your television, you can also use your voice to command it to change channels, the volume, or even turn the TV on and off. Take note that, unless specifically chosen in settings, the Xbox One won't wake your television with the Xbox console on. or turn it off. After selecting that option, it worked without a hitch on a variety of televisions. Xbox all in all, on. combining one guide, voice commands, and HDMI in, Xbox TV works great on the Xbox. It's a major convenience if you're both an avid gamer and TV fan, but there's an extra bonus should you only be the former. Though not officially supported, you can hook up any HDMI device to the One. That includes other game consoles, yes, even the competition, though there's a bit of perceptible control lag. The new Kinect, Kinect 2.0, is far better than its predecessor. That said, its voice functionality is still far from perfect. It's pretty far from okay. Most of the time, the Xbox picks up our voice commands both accurately and on the first try. Most of the time, however, is not enough when using the gamepad always works every time, the first time. Logging in with face recognition is very impressive and works instantaneously. It's not, however, a good enough reason to keep Connect connected. Xbox, that's me. Xbox, go back. Xbox, go back. Using Connect in games is similarly untrustworthy.
While attempting to shake off a zombie in Dead Rising 3 using Kinect by shaking the gamepad in front of the camera, we were brutally murdered. Several times in a row. The only game we've played with impressive Kinect integration is Kinect Sports Rivals. Gesture and body tracking is nearly one-to-one, -one, but voice commands still fall short. Smart Glass on Xbox One is finally useful. It connects quickly, it works with a variety of games and applications, and it's legitimately neat. Unlike Smart Glass on Xbox 360, the response from Smart Glass input on Xbox One is immediate. In so many words, Smart Glass is an actually viable input method for the One. We've only tested it on a first-generation Surface Pro, but we're hopeful that its iOS and Android versions are similarly responsive. Prettied up versions of third-party multi-platform blockbusters like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and Battlefield 4 offer the best options for fully fleshed out experiences. Though of course you can play both elsewhere. Microsoft's first party offerings, Forza Motorsport 5 and Rise, Son of Rome, act as both graphics showcases and tech demos, offering new console owners a taste of the One's horsepower and its new Kinect. In contrast to Sony's Knack and Killzone Shadowfall, Forza 5 and Rise are a stronger first showing. Rise may be the best looking game we've ever seen on any game console. Dead Rising 3 and LocoCycle round out the Xbox One's exclusive lineup, and neither is very exciting. Smart glass features in Dead Rising 3 are impressive, but much of the game feels underdone. LocoCycle is a bit more engaging, but far from a system seller. Unsurprisingly, the Xbox One's launch lineup of games is, well, it's a launch lineup. There are a few standouts in Rise, Forza, and some third-party games, but pickings are slim for now. But then again, Xbox One exclusive Titanfall is only a few short months away. As an entertainment device, the Xbox One claims to do it all, and it nearly does. TV works well, and setup is simplified for even the staunchest technophobe. Switching between applications, games, and the store is a snap, if not as quick as Microsoft originally claimed. Games, the most important aspect of Microsoft's new game box, look and play great, though the selection is limited, at least for now. In so many words, though Microsoft's messaging is dead set on mainstream America, the hardest core of game fans will find a powerful, capable game console. For that mainstream Microsoft's coveting, they'll find a pricey set-top box with a unique input method that only occasionally works. Make no mistake, the Xbox One is a game console, first and foremost. And at $500, it's a hard sell, but rest assured that the Xbox One is no dud. If you're willing to shell out the extra $100 for a peripheral that only occasionally works as promised, the Xbox One is a perfectly good game console. If that isn't enough, however, Microsoft's hoping that games like Rise and Dead Rising 3 will convince you. And if not, well, there's always that other console, right?